So this video is about getting your first animation out of 3D Studio Max. So again, we've been working with dinosaurs on this particular project, and we want to do a quick buzz around a dinosaur itself. So we want to do some simple things to set up a rendering environment, just really quick methods of getting that done so that we have basically just a, a nice, simple quality video coming together. So the first thing that we need to do, uh, again, is add a box and I'm going to set that box up to the appropriate height to make sure I can scale everything correctly. So I know the T-Rex is just under 20 feet tall and so just scaling it off of that box, you know, I'm going to simply match that 20 feet in terms of the overall height and then I'm going to let everything else sort of be what it is. So that's done. Go ahead and select the box and delete it. And what I want to do next is another box to act as a base. I'm just kind of zooming out and I'm going to put a box underneath my T-Rex so that I have something coming together. The next thing that I want to do is open up the material, material editor, which is right here. And um, I'm going to add in two materials and I'm going to grab them from the scanline material library, just the standard materials. I'm going to drop two of them in place. And the first one, we'll double click on it to activate it. And let's name this Dino Green. And on the ambient color, I'm just going to select sort of a clay green color, sort of a warm green, something about like that. And I'm not going to worry about any of the other parameters right now. Again, this is just about keeping things simple. I'm not going to try and set this up for really high-end renderings, anything like that. We just want to get some basics together. So I'm going to grab the output node on this material, drag and drop it onto my T-Rex model. So that is now um, whatever I do with this material, like if I make it purple, dinosaur's purple. Make it green, dinosaur's green. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to double click this material to activate its parameters. Let's call it base. And that sort of warm gray tone that it already is, I'm going to be perfectly happy with. So let's just do a quick rendering of this. So I'm going to render the viewport. I'm just going to kind of zoom in, something like that. And let's just take a quick look at what happens. So I'm going to go to rendering and render, or the shortcut key is F9. And you can see I basically have um, a really rough draft render coming together. So the first thing that I want to do is get a little better lighting set up, and I would like to have sort of a, an environment in the background as well. So this is a little bit of a dated method in 3ds Max. This is something that's, I don't want to say it's going away, um, but there are some more advanced methods that we'll get into. But as a first pass thing, this is a really good method to get a quick lighting setup coming together. So we're going to go to Create lights and daylight system. I'm going to accept yes on these dialog boxes. So I'm going to draw in a compass and then yes to mental ray sky, which again is dated mental ray is not actually part of 3ds Max anymore, but it will work okay ish with the scan line renderer or the uh, the art renderer. So essentially what that gives me is a standard daylighting setup. And remember this is um, representative of the sun, not actually the location, but think of this as light is coming from this direction, not from this location, but from this location. And if I go to the modify parameters, I can really quickly and easily go to my setup and change the time of day or the month, and it's going to move that around. Um, I can also set my location, my latitude, longitude, and it's going to give me accurate lighting from that location. So now, when I come in and do my rendering again, let's sort of just get a good view put together to bring up the rendering. I think I'm going to click F9 to bring up the rendering. Let's do it this way. Now I get a little bit of a sky background coming together. Um, the lighting has changed. It's a little more up above. I get sort of this nice soft shadows. So the last thing, a couple of things that I want to do is let's raise the rendering quality. There's a lot of visual noise. That's because it's still set to draft right now. So to do that, I'm going to go to Rendering and Render Setup, the shortcut key for that being F10. 
And um, after common, after the common tab, the ART renderer, we want to move that up to uh, high quality. And now when we render, we're still going to get a really quick rendering. Um, it's not going to take too long to do this, but you can see we have less visual noise, um, much, much higher quality. Um, and again, for a standard animation, I could kind of keep that low on the draft, but this is going to get us a little better look at what we want. So great for the quality. The next thing that we need to do is actually set up our 30 second long animation. So let's go ahead and close this. Let's close the dialog box and let's switch to four viewports. We'll get a view set up in each one here. So this perspective view, eventually I want to be able to switch to my camera view. But we do want to be able to see where that camera is going in each of the viewports as well. So first step is to create a camera. So I'm going to go to my Create tab, Cameras, and you want to work when you're starting out. It's definitely work with a free camera. I'm going to place it at approximate eye height right here. Let's use the top view to move that camera back. And then I'm going to rotate, but if you'll notice, something happens interesting with the rotating. If I rotate, I would much rather the rotation be localized to the camera rather than localized to the world in terms of the axis. And let me show you what I mean on that. Let's switch this viewport to the camera. Let's select the camera again. If you look at how the axis, the rotational axis is around the camera, right now it's set to view. And if I try and rotate the camera, that works just fine in the XY plane. But if I try and pitch the camera side to side, it's actually going to rotate around, which is a bit of a problem. So I'm going to Control Z undo that. The really simple fix is to change the axis orientation for rotation on the camera from view to local. And you can see immediately the widget that controls the rotation for the camera is now oriented to the camera's axis. So if I try and pitch the camera side to side or tilt the camera up and down, I think I just swapped those terms. I suppose that would be pitch up and down or tilt side to side. It's now doing that about the axis of the camera rather than the axis relative to the world. So it's a much better setup and a really simple thing to do, just switching from view to local for rotation on that camera. So the next thing that we need to do is establish uh, more time in our timeline. Right now, this is three and a third seconds. So to do that, we want 30 seconds. We're going to go to the time configuration panel. We want 30 seconds total. So we're going to set the end time to 900. That is 30 seconds at 30 frames per second. So 30 times 30, 900. And you can see our track down at the bottom is now 900 frames. So um, 30 second frame, just doing something around the dinosaur is a pretty simple task to do. We're going to turn on auto key. I'm going to go ahead and click the set key button to establish the camera location. I actually need to select the camera first. It, doesn't, it needs to know, Max needs to know what we're setting a keyframe for. So we've got the camera selected and I'm going to click set key. And you'll notice right down here at the bottom, a symbol that denotes that there is a keyframe at that location. So I'm going to move my shuttle 150 frames forward and I'm going to move the camera to a new location. Do something like this. It's come right underneath the T-Rex. So I'm going to rotate it around and let's slide it right underneath. Something that begins to get that sense of scale on the T-Rex. Something kind of terrifying. There we go. So since I have auto key on, I move the shuttle to 150. It has automatically placed a keyframe at 150. And now I can scrub between zero and 150 and I have the animation between those two points. So let's go ahead and move to 300. I'm going to move the camera back. I'm 
bring the T-Rex back into focus. Or I should say back into view, I'm not really adjusting focus. Again, that's something that we can actually control and set an animation parameter for in Max. Let's move a little bit further to 500. And again, as long as auto key is on, it is going to establish keyframes for me and create a nice smooth path. Let's move to 600. And I kind of want to bring that camera right over the back of the dinosaur. So let's go right to here. And then I'm going to use my elevation view to move it up. 700. Move it right across the top. And again, take note, 3ds Max is not tracking how I'm moving the camera. It is merely looking at location to location. And it is going to define the path that it thinks is best from location to location. So it's not actually recording your rotation or recording how you move the camera. It is simply looking at location A to location B. So if I come back to the previous keyframe, and let's toggle this to move between keyframes. I didn't set a rotation here when I moved the camera, so it didn't actually record a keyframe for the rotation. So I'm just going to go back to that keyframe and establish a rotation. Yeah, I like that better. Cruise right over the top. T-Rex is back in focus. And let's go ahead and set our final keyframe to move back and down as a way to finish. So, oh, and let's do just a little bit of a rotation just to make sure that I am recording that keyframe. So if I scrub through all of this now, see, that's the only part I'm not really wild about. You know, I should go back in and edit that path a little bit. It's not too smooth. I've got a lot of not dinosaur right through here too. So again, a quick fix to this in terms of editing. I've got a lot of dinosaur, not dinosaur right there too. So the really quick fix is I'm gonna go between those two keyframes and use my rotational value to bring the T-Rex back in frame. So now if I look at that path, much cleaner in terms of the animation. And then I had sort of the same thing right around in here. So let's go right here to 225. And again, I'm going to use my rotational parameter. Just bring that back in and line that view back up. So you can see that adds a rotational keyframe. And it's going to help keep the T-Rex in frame at all times. In fact, I think I'm going to add one more in right here as well. Just bring that around so we can see teeth and claws. Got it. So from here, I know that the basic renders were set up OK. So we're going to go ahead and establish um, the process of rendering out the entirety of these 900 frames. So I'm going to turn off Auto Key. Now is a really good time to file save. Let's drop this to the desktop really quick and call it Trex. Now I'm going to go to my rendering and once again to the render setup panel. So I've already got my equality established as high as being okay and that was a reasonably fast rendering. Again, the lower quality will get us higher speed, but uh, again, at a reduced quality, moving up higher quality, lower speed, or longer render time. So I'm pretty comfortable with that. I'm going to move to the common tab, and I'm going to say we want to render out the active time segment, zero to 900. I also have the option of just doing range. I might want to render from zero to 900, or uh, if I only want a portion of this, just setting that up in such a way that we can do something, you know, just zero to 100 or zero to 150, something like that. 
The size, this is very low resolution, 640 by 480, but it's fast. It's going to be what we need. It's going to be perfectly fine for a low resolution YouTube movie, which is our final output. The next thing that we need to do is we need to say what our file output is. So we are going to activate our save file. And again, I'm just going to write this to the desktop. And we want to create an AVI movie. And I'm going to name it again, Trex Movie. And AVI is perfectly fine, so I'm going to click Save. It's going to ask what um, video encoder we want. That's basically um, our uh, compressor that's going to make the individual frames play back correctly. So just go ahead and accept the defaults on that. Um, yeah, the DV encoder is perfectly fine. I'm just going to say OK to that. So now I've got my location, C users to my desktop, and I should be ready to go. So I'm going to go ahead and click Render. And you can tell right away I've done something terribly wrong. I am rendering the wrong viewport. So let's go ahead and hit stop to that. That's a good mistake to show. Stop. We need to, this to render. Oh, not stop. Cancel. Entirely the wrong view. We actually want to make sure we're rendering out viewport quad 4 camera 0 1. Let's try that again. Render. Do we want to overwrite it? Absolutely. It was entirely the wrong thing. And now we have a final movie being created for us. So it's taking, we can look a little bit here at how long it's going to take to render. So it looks like each frame's taking about 13 seconds. Time remaining is three hours and 17 minutes. Perfectly acceptable for an animation. Doesn't really take too long. It's a great time to go grab some lunch, check in on the render, and see how it's coming together. By the end of this process, we'll have a really nice, simple movie that we're ready to upload to YouTube.